in the spirit of communion with Christ and with one another, you have to take the basin of love. Because we are told that when Jesus held the basin, the basin is a symbol of deep, um, bottomless love of God. The basin. When you see the basin in his hands, he was hold, he held the basin of love. That is when you hold the basin. And you make sure that I will do what Christ would have done was he to come and sit on this seat of Moses. Jesus' love was lived in his life of touching the blind, the lame, the lepers, the possessed, and the penitent thief, and so many others. All the broken people were cleansed and embraced in the basin of love. This is exactly the communication today. That we must all go about our business holding the basin of love. This is going to be a very challenging night for the couples listening to these homilies or the homily of Holy Thursday. And maybe they have separated or have divorced or in the process of divorce. Or those young fellows who recently broke up. You know that can't be called separation or divorce because it could have been a union of criminality. But whatever it was, there was some friendship of sorts. Kakaumana. Whatever happened, happened. And maybe now somebody is saying that so and so is my enemy. Now this is the night we are being the greatest test that uh, we hold the basin of love. And we also must, we also must, again in our, in our time, we must welcome the blind, the lame, the lepers, mention all the names. All the broken people must be cleansed and embraced in the basin of love. Now tomorrow, Good Friday, we experience the humility, public humiliation of his being led like a lamb to the slaughter to find love in the darkened room of betrayal. This is now a special love. Remember, tomorrow we'll see the betrayal of the people who sang. I was watching um, the procession when Tanzanians were burying their, their, their late loved president. And you could see the streets littered with the people with the twigs and um, their lessons and some would even put them down. And I read one comment. Somebody was saying, how I wish that uh, this man can just wake up and see how many people loved him. But you see, that, that again now got me to the thinking of Good Friday. So you can imagine that's how you are mobbed by people who are singing your praises. Before the journey is over, and then they'll say, crucify him. And this is how life is. That uh, we face many a times the darkened room of betrayal. In which case, we are betrayed by the people we would not have expected. I don't know whether you have ever heard of a story about you, a story about you. And then it is revealed to you who was behind it. Now, the thought of who was behind it becomes more painful than the betrayal itself. To the extent you start even saying, Apana, hezi ya kafanya hivo. Unaza kutetea mtu. 
you know, Nasema, no, this person can do that. No, I know, no, that's my, my sister, no, that's my brother, that's whoever, you know, that can't happen. I know I shared with you a story, a very painful story. I can't remember which month, but it was on this platform of a lady whose husband was stolen by her own young sister, blood sister. The younger sister, you invite her, educate her. One morning she wakes up, her and your husband, they elope. Now, one, marriage is broken. The pain of losing your marriage and the brokenness. Number three, the pain of betrayal by the person whom you loved, your husband. But then there is number four, the person behind it. I know we may want to further this argument. No, the man should have known better. It is okay. I am not arguing on that front line. That is also very true. But we can suspend that line of uh, argument. There is your sister in the mix. And maybe you even fought for her to come and be with you in your marriage, in your own family. Maybe at some point even your husband was not comfortable with it. Maybe you tried because you wanted to help her. Or maybe somebody that you helped, a, a very close friend, you helped stand in business. And then one day, the person just messes you up. The thought of the person behind it many a times actually is more painful than the act itself. Because you keep on asking, so and so can do that. Now, dear good ones, this is what we call the darkened room of betrayal. If you didn't know, the darkest room of betrayal is full of men and the women you'd never expect. In fact, none of your enemies is there. None. They are busy doing other things of profitable nature. This is where we are reminded that in this darkened room of betrayal, we only need to enter there carrying one thing. Only one thing. The basin. The basin of love. It will never be simple. And it was never meant to be simple. Now, at the last supper, Jesus is giving his last talk to his followers before his death and reminding them exactly that. And that is why we will be reminded on Sunday that he died with so many wounds, five major ones, and resurrected with the five major scars. And then we ask, what for? And he has a glorified body. The answer is found on Holy Thursday. Because the lesson is, in the darkest room, betrayers will momentarily win and there will be death. But then, death will be defeated. It is death that will be defeated, not the killers. Now that is where, uh, when is it? Is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow we'll be talking about the paradox? Yeah, I think it is tomorrow. Good Friday. Talk about the paradox of the cross. Then you think about it, then you realize it is good to be a Christian. Because if you are not Christians, we can just be like animals. Because it can be so sad. Imagining that there will be betrayal and then in this life, betrayers win. Jesus said, death is defeated. The one who kill you have not been defeated. They are still among you. They are among us. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are our, our spouses, our best of friends, our church members. This is the lesson that Jesus is giving tonight. We know how important a person's last words are, especially when they know that they are about to die. 